Welcome back, all my health enthusiasts. Remember, health sucks, let's talk about it. So what's on the discussion for today? Well, we're gonna be talking about the cardiovascular system. That's right, we are gonna be talking about the heart. And we're gonna find out if you guys have any. And if you can finish through today's video, well, you probably got a little bit of heart, let's be honest. So let's uh, bring this picture up for our viewers so they can see it in detail, thank you. All right, guys, so I know this may look like a lot, and uh, even though we're gonna be talking about mainly the branches coming off of the a aortic arch, um, I do wanna know that's not all we're gonna discuss today. I am gonna give you a little bit about the chambers, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the blood flow and how blood actually flows from the heart, meaning does it come from the you know ventricles first, the atria, and where does it travel to? So let's begin with step one. One should look something like this. Now, you don't have to worry and stress yourself out trying to draw an anatomically correct heart. It's no big deal. You just gotta draw it like this. So draw a heart as you know it, and then divide it into four sections. This is so that you can be more in touch with the right atrium versus the ventricle, and the left atrium versus the left ventricle. You have to know um, your positioning. So, the reason why you might, you might be a little confused now is because you may not be aware of the anatomical correct position that we have to always refer to the body. So even though this might be on the left side of your visual, uh, of what you're seeing, your field, it is actually the right side of the heart. So anyway, with that being said, um, I don't want you guys to just draw this and think, all right, here's my three branches coming off the aorta, let's go. No, I want you to understand it first. Understand that usually your arteries considered up here contain you know, oxygenated blood, and then this sends all the oxygenated blood from your heart to the rest of your body, which we're gonna get into. But for now, let's start with the process. Where does blood flow and where does it start and end? Let's say, for um, example, we start in the right atrium via what? The inferior, let me use a blue for veins because veins usually carry deoxygenated blood. So the inferior and superior vena cava come together along with the coronary veins, are, which supply or bring blood from the heart back to the heart. So yeah, you gotta have blood supply even for your own heart um, via the coronary arteries. So the coronary vein, the superior inferior vena cava, that's three things that drain into the right atrium. And then the right atrium is gonna go into the right ventricle. So the blood is gonna come, come from the RA to the RV. But what stops it from going back? You have to know about the valves. So usually how I first remembered it, I didn't wanna know the difference between tricuspid valve and mycuspid, or uh, mitral, sorry. Tricuspid and mitral valve. I, I always forgot which side it was on, left or right. But here's how I'm gonna help you remember that. So you can call it the right atrioventricular valve or the left atrioventricular valve for these sides. But to help you remember the difference between tricuspid or mitral, know that if I give you three vessels that go into the right A, well then that's gonna be the tricuspid going into the right ventricle. So um, the tricuspid valve is from RA to RV, and that's gonna then send blood from the right ventricle to the lungs to be oxygenated. But it can't go through any one of these, it actually goes through the middle, and you can't see it, it's the pulmonary or the semilunar pulmonary valve. Once it gets through the semi-pulmonary uh, valve, it's gonna go through the back side, and I didn't depict it here, but it's gonna kinda go through the back, and then it's gonna go to the lungs. It's gonna shoot off to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. Once oxygenated, it's gonna return via the pulmonary vein. So I forgot to mention that once it shoots out the back um, as the pulmonary artery, I said most of the time, arteries carry oxygenated blood but you have exceptions, for example, in the umbilical um, arteries in, in, as a baby or <clears throat> in the pulmonary artery uh, as an adult where you carry deoxygenated blood to the um, lungs. Then the pulmonary vein comes back to the left atrium with oxygenated blood. And then that oxygenated blood drops down to the mitral valve through the mitral valve to the left ventricle. Once it's in the left ventricle, we know our left side of the heart is usually the strongest because of the myocardial tissue and the contraction um, power that it has to have. So um, getting the rest of this blood has to go throughout your whole body. So of course it's gonna be a little stronger and it's gonna be a little thicker. So the left ventricle um, is very important for this. And then once it shoots it um, up, we can start to talk about where it's going. 
So step two. Step two is gonna look something like this. So like I said, as the arch comes around, you're gonna have three main branches. And the only difference that we really have to recognize here is the one between the left and the right side. So usually we'd have um, coming off the arch is just left subclavian and then left common carotid going up and splitting into the external and internal carotid artery. But the difference here is this brachiocephalic trunk on the right side. So before you actually get left subclavian or right common, or sorry, uh, common carotid, you actually get this brachiocephalic trunk and then it splits off into the subclavian going this way and then it has uh, a branch going up as the common carotid and then it branches again as the ex external and internal carotid artery. So this is step two. Step three is gonna be crucial in getting the vite C of the subclavian artery. So it's gonna look something like this. Step three is gonna be for vite C. So as you see here, ladies and gentlemen, we got V, I, T, C are the main branches coming off of the subclavian artery. So for the first one, it's the vertebral artery. The second one is the internal thoracic artery going down. And then we have the thyrocervical trunk. Now what's coming off of this thyrocervical trunk is what's most important. This is gonna be known as the inferior thyroid artery. And I'll get into that um, a little bit, um, in just a little bit when I talk about the ECA. So next is the C for cervical or costo cervical trunk. Um, and then that's that right there. That's all we have to know for that. And then four, step four, I'm just gonna make real quick and that's gonna be for the rib. So that rib comes down and the subclavian, once it passes the first rib, just behind the um, anterior scalene, it's gonna turn into the axillary, axillary artery, it's past the first rib. And that's all you have to know for that section um, or for that side of the subclavian. And the reason I didn't do it over here, guys, is because it's the exact same on this side. The only difference, again, is that brachiocephalic trunk. So let's start and let's work our way up now into the external carotid artery. All right, so for the external carotid artery, we're gonna start off with, uh, remember guys, the thyrocervical trunk turned into what? The inferior th uh, thyroid artery. So as it goes up from the ECA, the first branch coming off of that is gonna be the superior thyroid artery. And those are gonna um, supply, of course, the thyroid. Um, then we have uh, on the back side the ascending pharyngeal artery, and on the other side. So for the front side, I like to just say sta la fa ma masta. So sta is superior thyroid artery, la is lingual artery just under the chin, and then uh, f is for facial, so facial artery, and then you have the maxillary artery up here, and then you're gonna have the superficial temporal artery at the top. So don't confuse the bottom sta with the top sta, which is superficial, versus superior. And on the back side, coming from superficial temporal down, you have, um, what is this? So the uh, APA is the ascending pharyngeal artery, and then you have the occipital artery, and then you have the posterior auricular artery. Um, and that's gonna do it for the branches of the ECA. Now the reason I didn't um, do anything for the ICA is because that's gonna branch off and go inferior, or sorry, interior, inside your head to supply the uh, brain. So that's that. Um, and then next step is going to be, shit, I think we're done. So yeah, that's pretty much the blood flow or the blood supply of the three main, the three main branches coming off of the aorta. So um, I could go into more detail real quick it's for you guys. So what I did in the earlier drawing was I drew a face. That's not a face, but it'll work. And then an eye and then a little ear and then I just drew the branches so this ECA I drew it coming up and then where it supplies so like I said this where the throat would be the superior thyroid artery and then you go up lingual just below the chin and then facial and then you have the maxillary and then you have the superficial temporal artery right there and on the back side you're gonna have the posterior auricular, the occipital artery, and then the ascending pharyngeal artery coming off the backside. So that's pretty much that right there, guys.
All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps this up for the three main branches coming off the aortic arch. And uh, I want you guys to be on the lookout in the next week or so for the cardiovascular system continued as we do the descending aorta and the three main branches coming off of that. So guys, remember, health sucks. Let's talk about it. Later. Later.